This will be our 14th message in the subject of assurance. <coughs> How assurance empowers the believer. <coughs> our text that has been read is a text that reveals the assurance of people, how it affected them, You'll remember after Paul and his company had a, sought to go into Asia, the Holy Spirit forbade them and said, no, you, you, you can't go into Asia. So some people can't hear the Lord speak that way. They, they go anyway. And then they wonder why their work isn't, isn't successful. And they essayed or attempted to go into Bithynia and God blocked the way there too. Couldn't go in. They had the discernment to see that. And then after these failures, uh, they weren't failures, after these prohibitions, Paul had a vision of a man in Macedonia saying, come over here and help us. That's all it says was that a vision. But after he'd seen the vision, our text said, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. Quite amazing text. I would venture to say that not many people have uh, had an experience like that. I would also add that a lot more could have it than have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Assurance empowers a believer. That's, a, that's the affirmation. There's an example of it right here. Assuredly gathering. They, were, they knew they were thinking the right way. They concluded, they thought about this vision. It wasn't like an extensive vision, like John had a revelation, uh, had a vision on I, Pat was an extensive, <laughs> extensive revelation covering 22 chapters of the scripture. Daniel had some rather extensive visions. Ezekiel had some extension, extensive visions, but this was not an extensive vision. This was rather rather brief. But these disciples, they'd been walking alongside of Christ. They've been living by faith, walking in the Spirit. And they were tuned in to the heavenly frequency. Amen. They thought upon this vision and their assurance told them, we're being called. This is God See, they saw a man. They didn't see Jesus standing on the shore. See, they saw a man saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. They said, this, God's calling us to preach. So they immediately set out to go. Now we're going to think about that, the impact of assurance upon the believer. Now, a word of warning here. This will also unveil who doesn't have assurance. So it's, we should <laughs> give this warning before we begin. Now there's a, there's a need for assurance in the body of Christ. For instance, we've got a clear command. Think of these commandments I'm going to mention. Liken them to that man in Macedonia saying, come over and help us. Yep, this is, this is God Almighty talking. As, uh, as he was just called you as holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it's written, be ye holy for I'm holy. 
Now, for some folk, that's a verse of the Bible where they're not sure they can do it. Yeah. Huh? That's why they're not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The necessity of holiness, for instance, is affirmed. There's no question about the, the need for holiness. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So, all right, this is a... This is not like an optional thing we're dealing with here. And we've been given some facts that should drive us to the conclusion, let's be up and doing this. Let's be up and being holy because he, the new man's created in true holiness. Oh, we, got, we got a nature that matches this situation. And yet this expression of holiness has got to be perfected. This isn't like a once for all. This At this point, this differs a little from the vision. The vision, they just went over into Macedonia, and then they, they had to hunt around to find who to be helped. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't do that if you don't have assurance. Yeah. You can't be looking for the outlet unless you're assured there is one. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. See, they, these brethren with Paul, they were perfecting their call. They're perfecting their call by carrying it out. Amen. Because when they got over to Macedonia, it wasn't a sign saying, welcome to Macedonia. Here's what the Lord wants you to do. It wasn't that, wasn't that simple. Wasn't any synagogue there. Oh, we're at a big disadvantage. We used to be in a, we were kind of used to a synagogue being around. So we could go to the synagogue and it, there'd be some people there, but there, we better ask around and see if there's anybody worshiping God around here. Now, you couldn't do that if you weren't assured. Yeah. And he said, well, there's a, there's a group of women that meet down by a river. And it, they pray down there regularly. On, and it's on the Sabbath day. Oh. See, you couldn't, you'd pass by that kind of thing if you weren't assured. Yeah. That's right. If you were to assess your life, you will find that before you had assurance, there probably was a lot of opportunities right under your nose, and you just, you weren't assured. Yeah. Couldn't see them. There is a power that's associated with godliness. There's a form of godliness that denies the power thereof. See, that's the power of holiness. Now, I'm suggesting that assurance is a, kind of the key to this, this power. Now, in this message, I'm going to affirm that assurance is at least an appointed means to the power, to the realization of the power. I'm not prepared to say it's the only means, but it is one of the primary means to obtain the power. So if, if you lack power, that is, you're not getting done what God told you to do, you gotta, you got to be able to just spell it out what we're talking about here. If God says to do something, and you're having a lot of trouble doing it, and it's not getting done, you don't have power. That's what the trouble is. And all the talk in the world can't convince you you do. If you don't have it, you don't have it. But assurance is an area where you can get it. There are things that require more than resolve. And they require more than an extended effort. There are some things that God requires you to do that you can make up your mind to do it, but you got there's something else that's... You learn by experience now. There's something else that's needed here. Maybe you work at it a long time. You're, you're trying to perfect this. You're trying to shape your life like you know God wants you to do, but you're, you're not having as much success as you know, as you want to say nothing to what God wants. Now, that's an indication you need some power. There's too many powerless Christians. Too many of them. Be more specific, there's too many people in the professed church that don't have power. 
I understand that sometimes people aren't godly because they just don't want to be, but I'm not talking about those kind of people. I'm talking about people that see they ought to be godly, they, they see they ought to be holy, they know that God says this, but they just, they just can't get it done. They need the power. Amen. Don't reject the power. Now, be in our text... These are true kingdom laborers. They weren't sitting on the premises. They were, they were trying to find where to go. They just didn't sit down and by the side of the river and think. They had just finished going throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia. They'd been, they'd been traveling. They'd been active. And they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit in the midst of all this activity where they were being received and sowing a lot of seed. All of a sudden, door goes shut. And they were forbidden to preach the word in Asia. They could. That's why it was a long time before China ever got it. No, oh, don't doubt this. I'm telling you the truth. They were forbidden by the Holy Spirit. After they were come to Mysia, they said to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. See, so I'm pointing out, these were not indolent, lazy disciples. These were people engaged in the work of the Lord. They had had some considerable success. They delivered the decrees that the Church of Jerusalem was sent to all the Gentile churches. They delivered that all over the Gentile region. So they've been very, very active. And although they were stopped from going into Asia, although they were told by the Holy Spirit, don't go to Bithynia, something different occurred when they saw this vision. Yet when any question, you might, after being stopped twice, you might think that, well, that would gender to some doubt. I wonder whether I wonder whether this is really a call or not. It immediately. Yeah, that's right. yeah. And what I'm pointing out is these people had assurance all through these other labors. Amen. They had built up their assurance. Their the assurance was so strong they knew when they shouldn't go to Asia. Their assurance was so strong they knew when they shouldn't go to Bithynia. And now they knew they should go to Macedonia. Assurance did not move them to continue efforts to go to Bithynia. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. to, see, some people think, well, sure, I got my shirt. I'm supposed to go there. I'm going to just, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to try and go next year. I can't, I can't get my fare to get the boat. To, uh, don't open doors there, but I, I know, I know God wants me to go. I'm going to, I want to keep on trying. And see, this isn't the way the kingdom of God operates. Yes, amen. I'm sorry, this isn't the way it works. This is something to note that empowerment can't come through creeds or positions or identity with the right group or empty profession. You might say, I know we got the I got the right message. I went to Bible college, I went to seminary, I got that's not how assurance comes. You can graduate with A plus and get meet all the requirements and all this, pass all the tests. That, that's not how assurance comes. Once they were assured God was leading them, immediately they just started making plans to go. And it didn't take them a long time to get there either. I imagine when they went down, there was a boat waiting on them. Happened to have enough room for them to get in and get on board. Assured. Amen. All right, now once again, how assurance empowers the believer. Now, that was an example, textual example, of how insurance empowered them to just start going to Macedonia as soon as they assuredly gathered or concluded. We'd say concluded. They assuredly concluded, it's just God calling us. They didn't say, we've got to wrap up a few things at home here. Got to make sure we get all the business done here immediately. Yeah. See, believers keep their business up to date. Yeah. People that are assured don't have to do a lot of backtracking. They just keep, keep things kind of up to date. That's part of the fruit of assurance. 
I'm going to give you some examples of how assurance empowers the believers. These are familiar incidents, but I want to sit on, sit on them for a little while, sit on them for a little while, to show that this is what we're talking about is not philosophical. This is a very real empowerment that happens. The first is this incident of Joshua and Caleb when the spies were sent to spy out the land. Ten of the spies said, we can't do it. They weren't assured. They didn't have assurance. This is how people who don't have assurance talk. We can't do it. Yeah, it's too big. It's, a, it's too aggressive. There's a, not enough of us here. We don't have enough money to do this. Uh, we're not, I don't feel like I'm competent for this. See, this is how uh, people without assurance think. Joshua and Caleb said, let us go up at once, yeah. immediately, see. Yeah. Let us go up at once and possess it. We are well able to overcome it. So that wasn't just a pep talk. That was an assured hearts talk. That was assured yeah. hearts talking. Let's get to the work here. Let's go for Sally Forth and take the country. We're well able. They weren't, it, that wasn't after a count was made. They didn't take a count and say, well, are we able? Let's say, oh, no, we don't have enough people. They didn't do that. They were well, they had assurance. Assurance empowered them to say that. All right, let's take another example. David facing Goliath. Now, that was, to say the least, an intimidating experience for the flesh. You remember the incident, Goliath saw David, he, <laughs> What is going on here? Got this youthful stripling come out here to fight me? What am I, a dog? Yeah. And here's what David said. Then David mm -hmm. said, then said David. Mm -hmm. Now this wasn't a speech he practiced at home. Mm -hmm. He didn't stand before a mirror and go through the mechanics of saying this speech. Uh -huh. Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear. And that right there would have stopped most people. Yeah. And with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. Mm -hmm. See, assurance helps you to assess the situation correctly. This day, immediately, see, this day the Lord will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. And all this assembly, mm -hmm. the shaking army behind me, all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and a spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. That's a that was assurance. That's how assurance talks. Now you live long enough, most of you. You can't you can't like pretend when you say something. <laughs> you say something like this. You can't be pretending. Of course, that's why people don't talk like this. That's why they're intimidated by Babylon and intimidated by institutions and intimidated by the trends of the day. That's why. They don't have assurance. David had assurance. And it empowered. See what I'm saying is the assurance is what empowered him to say this. The assurance that was the engine that drove this statement that he made. And it was Jonathan and his armor bearer, just two people. And they come upon a, a regiment of Philistine soldiers. First Samuel 14.6, Jonathan said to the young man, he was a young man. He's like Brother Gilbert and Brother Judah. He's a young man. The young man didn't see it this way, but so the man who had the vision did the talking. That's how it is. When the people have assurance, they are the ones that should do the talking. The others should do the listening. Jonathan said to the young man that bears armor, come. 
Let us go over the, into the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be the Lord will work for us. For there is no restraint to the Lord to save with many or by few. And his armor bearer said unto him, good student now, do all this in thy heart. Yeah. Turn thee, behold, I am with thee. See, that's what the folk without assurance should say to the people with assurance. We're with you. You got the assurance. You got the assurance. See, if a people or a man of God, someone with assurance says, we can do it, we can do it, people. Then the people just say, we're with you on this. Then Jonathan said, behold, we'll pass over into these men and we will discover ourselves to them. We won't sneak up on them. We won't sneak up on them because that... Flesh might get a little bit too much credit there. So we won't, gonna, won't sneak up on them. We'll discover ourselves to them. And if they say unto us, Tear until we come to you, then we'll stand still in our place. It will not go up to them. See, those that are assured, they're thinkers. They're thinkers. But if they say, Come up to us, then we will go up. For the Lord has delivered them into our hand and this will be a sign unto us yeah. see only a person with assurance can talk like this you you really can't pretend to talk like this <laughs> if you try you all it takes is one good try and you'll find out yeah. that assurance is the only thing that really can empower you mm -hmm. to talk like this now that's why we meet mm -hmm. this is what this fellowship is all about Amen. this is about bringing people to a point where they're assured because no one's going to launch out in the name of the Lord who's not assured. No one's going to throw themselves into doing what God said to do if they're not assured. This isn't going to happen. So we're, we're seeking to build up the assurance of people so they know whom they have believed and are persuaded that God's able to keep what he's committed to them against that day. And these people will rise up and do something. Amen. Let's take another example. I'm sure now assurance empowers the believer. Here's Peter and John. They come into the temple. There's a man they dropped off there every day so he could uh, take a collection from people that were pitiful, pity, pitiable toward him. And a man asked him for some alms. Uh, There's a man now, there's a man of assurance speaking. Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. Look at here. <laughs> I don't belong to the uh, charismatic movement. Well, you got to be frank sometimes, you know. You got to just tell it the way it is. I don't belong to one of those health and wealth groups. I don't have any silver and gold. But here's assurance talking now. But such as I as I have give I to thee and we'll just get right to it right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth just rise up and walk yeah. see that's assurance right. you can't do that you go try and do that without assurance and it'll just, it'll just be an embarrassing situation for you see assurance empowered Amen. That's right. uh, Stephen there's another example Stephen's being stoned they stoned Stephen, calling on the name of God and saying, Pay him back, Lord. Get him back. Break their teeth. Cause them to drop their stones. <laughs> See, Stephen had assurance. He said, Lord Jesus, I see it now. My, my time has come. My, my fight's finished now. I, I can... Receive my spirit. He had assurance. He didn't say, I hope. Hope everything's all right. I hope, I hope we're ready to receive it. He just, he had assurance. Yeah. He kneeled down, deliberate, mm -hmm. cried out with a loud voice so everybody could hear. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. You can't say that if you don't have assurance. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be defending yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And when he said this, he fell asleep. That's Earth's viewpoint. Uh -huh. The Lord took him. That's yeah. Amen. You can't do that without assurance. Here's another. Paul is on his way to Rome on a government boat. He's a prisoner. 
storm comes up, it's no ordinary storm. Even the seasoned sailors are afraid. But the Lord appears to him that night, an angel appeared to him, told him he's turning the ship over to him. I'm going to give these souls, I'm going to put these souls so that every preacher could hear this. I'm going to put these souls in your charge. You see? Anyone that preaches or teaches, you got to have this word. I put these souls now in your charge. Paul said, Sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. It shall be even as it was told unto me. Howbeit, we must be cast on a certain island. I pray you to take some meat. This is for your health. First health and wealth there. This is for your health, for there shall not fall a hair from the head of any one of you. How did he know that? Assurance. He believed. See what this what was said. See, assurance, it boils down to believe in what God has said. It kind of, kind of boils down to that. Where there isn't assurance, it boils down that people didn't believe what God said. God said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee, but see, there are people think he did. They're not assured, so they don't they don't launch out to do very much for God. Here's another example. Paul knew what was going to happen at the resurrection of the dead. Paul knew that his body was temporal. It was a vile body. It was just on loan. He gave it as a living sacrifice to God. And he knew when he left this world, he'd go to be with the Lord. So he's explaining this to the Corinthians that some of them didn't believe now there was a resurrection. He said, if after the manner of men I fought with beasts at Ephesus, <laughs> I don't know the extent of that remark, but it doesn't sound like it was something minor. What advantage is me, what advantage is it me if the dead rise not? He was so assured that he was going to rise from the dead, he is willing to die for Jesus. Amen. He was that assured. Yeah. I'll lay down my life. I know God's going to raise me up. Amen. That's assurance. How about bold preaching? When it's not fashionable to be bold. When it may be dangerous to be bold. <laughs> Paul says, Acts 28, 31. I would went preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence. Then the Holy Spirit adds, no man forbidding him. <laughs> That's assurance. Yeah, amen. A lot of conditions in the church world would not exist if those who taught, preached and taught had assurance. A lot of the conditions wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. But see, you can graduate from a religious institution with honors and not have confidence. Yeah. And when you've got preachers and teachers that don't have confidence and they can't preach things concerning you guys with all confidence, they really don't have any power. Yeah, that's right. One more, Paul's boldness for Christ. Philippians 1.20 According to my earnest expectation, there's a couple of words that mean assurance, <laughs> My earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I should be ashamed. But that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified. I say Christ shall be magnified uh -huh. in my body, whether it be by life or by death. That's assurance. So I want to ask you, how confident are you that Christ is being magnified in your body. That's what the people see. That's what they see at work. That's what they see in the store. That's what the neighbors see. How confident are you about that matter? You're being mag that Christ is being magnified in your body. If you're confident of that, there's no end to how your influence can spread. Whether by life or whether by death. <laughs> so I've showed you some examples of people that had assurance and of the impact 
it had upon them. Now let's briefly review areas where empowerment is really needed. How about this? Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. See, tonight, the day may have challenged you and you've become more confident and you're bold in your faith. Don't cast that away. Amen. Tomorrow you're going to face something to try and take that from you. It may be a severe, hard test. It may be a subtle. But Satan's not about to let this go unnoticed. Nor is God. Cast not away there for your confidence. See, how is it you can't, it, you can not cast away your confidence? It's by being assured. Assured, assured will enable you to keep your confidence. It's a big, it's a big order. Keeping your confidence. Or running the race. Not walking the walk, running the race. It's said before us, seeing we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, not here on earth, we're not talking about the witnesses on earth talking about the witnesses in the gallery up yeah, here. Amen. So great a kind of witnesses, let's lay aside every sin and wait. What's a holding you back? Yeah. Is it your mom? Or your dad? Or your children? Or your relatives? Or your job? What a company you keep? What's holding you back? Cast it off. Cast off the sin and weight that so easily besets you. Let's run with patience. That's endurance. The race set before us. How can you do that? Assurance is what empowers you to do that. Looking unto Jesus, and as you look to Jesus, the rays of glory could come from him. He met from him. Strengthening the fabric of insurance. And he becomes a cloth that can't be torn. Or a threefold cord that's not easily broken. Amen. Looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Why? He knew where he was going. Yeah. He had assurance. Right. Here's another area. An area. Now we need assurance. These are areas we need assurance. Put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Those inward inclinations or proclivities to things you you know aren't right just reject them yeah. how can you do that the only way you can do that is through assurance Amen. Yeah. you've got to have assurance you can't do this by regimen yeah. right. you can't do this just by human discipline or just because you have to do it assurance is what empowers you to do these things to put off the old man and put on the new man. Put him on now. Put him on. At the equivalent to set him on the throne. Let the new man do the ruling now. Now for the old man ruling. Now for that. You say relegate him to the cross where he belongs. New man to the throne where he belongs. Put on the new man. How, can you, how are you going to do that? If it's a matter of academics, you know what the new man can do because it's revealed in Scripture. His nature is revealed and what he does is revealed. Putting him on, though, that, <laughs> well, that, that proved very difficult for some people to put him on. They just feel like they're all the time failing, all the time coming short, and that's their business to work this out. But if you, want, if you don't like those kind of feelings, that's, you need assurance. Assurance will enable you to immediately put him on. Like Paul and the company immediately are said to go to Bithynia. When you read, put on the new man, immediately you go about to put him on. Because you're assured, see of it. Or fighting the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight. Amen. Fight it. See, some people never learn to fight. They don't fight. You give up too easy. Run too easy. Fight the good fight of faith. You face Goliath, face him and fight him. Yeah. Do it. You, you face something that looks like it's bigger than you and face, face it and accomplish it. Amen. Do the good works of God. Yeah. How are you going to do it? Assurance will empower you. Not only just to fight, but to fight a good fight. 
So the brethren look at you and say, oh, he's a fighting, a good fight. Look at that fight he's fighting. It's a good fight. Look at how he delivered a blow to the enemy. Look at him sling that stone. Look, look at the way he holds that sword. Look, look at his confident posture. He's fighting a good fight. Why is he? He had assurance. Amen. Be steadfast. Pray, we prayed about this tonight. Mm -hmm. Therefore, my beloved brethren, that's in view of the resurrection. This is in the resurrection chapter. Be steadfast. Un, 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 unmovable. That's quite a word, isn't it? Un, see, there are some things, if you work with uh, machinery or some kind of mechanics, there's some things that you, you can't have moving about. If you got your engine in your car, you can't be off the motor mounts and just kind of flopping around in there. But some people's lives are like an un, like a motor that's not on motor mounts. It's just a flopping around in there, see? Unmovable. And unmovable doesn't say I quit doing any things. So I'm just kind of cemented to the floor. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. How can you do that? How can you do that? Is by assurance. You need assurance Amen. to do that. How about this requirement? Put on the whole armor of God. Don't be selective. Don't say, well, right now what a helmet will do right now. Yeah. Well, I don't see any enemy, so just to, just have my loins girt with the truth. That'll, that'll be... That'll suffice. I don't need a breastplate of this. No, put on the whole armor of God. Get it all on. Every piece of it. How can you do that? You've got to have assurance. Assurance, first of all, that there is such a thing as the whole armor. It, this, it is real. This, this isn't a fancy sentence. This is something that exists. There is a full armor of God that fully protects and fully enabled you, but to put it on, you've got to have assurance. So you can stand against the wiles of the devil and having done all to stand. Here's the objective. The objective is, under severe assault, stay standing. <laughs> That's the We're not talking about little bitty armies. We're talking about, you know, armies of Amalekites yeah. and... Hittites and Jebusites and Perizzites and Philistines and Midianites. And we're talking about formidable armies. About the uh, Sennacherib's army of 185,000. We've got to stand in, in the face of that. You've got to stand when you look out there and all you see is the Assyrian army. It's all around you. Whoa, whoa, whoa what are we going to do? Alas, alas. Servant Gehazi didn't have assurance. Right. But Elisha, he had assurance. He said, oh, open, <laughs> open his eyes, Lord. I know, I can see it. I, I can see it, Lord. Uh -huh. this, is, this host isn't intimidating me, but he's got to see what I see. Once he sees what I see, he'll be all right, Lord. Open up his eyes. There's some people you got to pray that for them. Yeah. They're really the kind of people that someone else has to... That's what Paul did. He prayed their eyes might be opened right. or enlightened. And what about in coming to God? It's one thing to put on paper that you come to God and know theologically that we come to God, but when you know God, the fire goes out before him that he is absolutely righteous and does not compromise his righteousness and will not acquit the guilty, and you know all these things about God. Now, coming to God is a different matter when you know this. But you can have boldness. This is Ephesians 3.12. We have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of or that comes from Him. That's assurance. Assurance empowers you to actually draw near to God. And when you draw near to God... What's against you doesn't look so big. Yeah. Amen. When you're impressed with God, you're unimpressed with your enemies. Huh? Amen. When as you draw near to God, you can see what he's able to do, you stop worrying about what the men are able to do. Amen. Circumstances don't look the same. What made the difference? 
assurance. Now, what God requires is more than man by himself can deliver. We have an example of it in Israel. They heard God boom out of heaven at what they were to do. They said, all he said, we will do. Yeah. Sounded real good. He made a covenant, blood sprinkled covenant. We'll do it. God responded, Deuteronomy 5.29, Oh, that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Oh, oh that they, you do have a heart like that. Yeah. That happens to be what you receive when you come into Christ Jesus. You've got a heart like this. God doesn't say to the people in Christ, oh, that they had such a heart. Because <laughs> they got such a heart. Amen. But it's the job of preachers and teachers and exhorters and people that stir us up to apprise us of what's ours in Christ Jesus and enable us to shake ourselves, shake off those guilty fears. Yeah, shake them off. Be confident before the Lord. How much empowerment does assurance give you? As much as you need. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Whatever, whatever area in your life, you need power. And you, you've got some. You, you examine. I've, I've got my job examining my own self. But you, you can examine yourself. What, what area am I having trouble getting done? I'm trying, but I'm not at all satisfied with my progress. I want to go further. Here's the key. Assurance. The full assurance of faith and hope will empower you. Amen. Amen. I believe Brother Aaron has our exhortation.